Today is my 40th birthday. Here are all the things that I know at 40 that I wish I knew at 20. Starting with number one, your relationship with others is a direct reflection of your relationship with yourself. If you treat yourself poorly, then you will unconsciously seek out and tolerate others who treat you poorly as well. If you treat yourself with dignity and respect, then you will only tolerate others who treat you with dignity and respect too. Number two, the only way to feel better about yourself is to do things worth feeling good about. Respect is earned, not given. Number three, the only failure is not trying. The only rejection is not asking. The only mistake is not risking any Thing. Success and failure are fuzzy concepts that only exist in your mind before you do something, not after. After the fact, everything will be a mixture of both. The only real failure is doing nothing. Number four, no one is coming to save you. No single thing will solve all of your problems. No goal, no achievement, no relationship. No one will ever fix you. You will always feel mildly inadequate and somewhat dissatisfied with your life. Nothing is wrong with you for feeling this way. On the contrary, it might be the most normal thing about you. Number five, be the partner you want to have. If you want a healthy and fit partner, then be healthy and fit yourself. If you want a loyal and trustworthy partner, then be loyal and trustworthy yourself. To put it another way, would you date you? If not, then that's a fucking problem. Number six, the most valuable things in life compound over a long period of time. I'm talking about health, wealth, knowledge, confidence, relationships. These things will frustrate you when you're young because they are slow. But if you start building them from a young age and you don't stop, by the time you're in your 30s and 40s, you will have an incredible life. Number seven, the most sexy and exciting things in life are the opposite. They start out extremely fun, but then have intense diminishing returns. When you're young, these things distract you and occupy a lot of your time and attention. This applies to social media, casual sex, drugs and alcohol, video games, gambling, vacations, and blowjobs. The first time is incredible, the second time is almost as good, but then it's all downhill from there. Well, except for the blowjobs. Number eight, if you're not turning down things that excite you, then you're not focused enough on something that matters. Our world is overflowing with stimulation and opportunity. If you aren't struggling to turn down options, then you haven't correctly prioritized what matters to you. Number nine, taking responsibility for all of your problems alleviates more suffering than it creates. Most people assume that if you take responsibility for all the pain in your life, then you will just feel worse about it. But the opposite is actually true. The more responsibility you take, the more you empower yourself to actually do something about that pain. That's because, number 10, you give power to who you blame. When you blame someone else for your problems, you are giving them power over you. You are allowing them to define and dictate your happiness and well-being. This is fucking stupid, so don't do it. It's not worth it. Number 11, if you have to tell someone you're that, then you're not that. A rich man doesn't feel need to show people he's rich. A smart man doesn't feel need to tell people he's smart. A confident person doesn't have to show people that he's confident. He just is. Don't say it, be it. Number 12, motivation is not the cause of action, but the effect. If you wanna feel motivated to do something, take the smallest action towards doing it, then let the momentum carry you forward. Number 13, love is not the cause of commitment, but the effect. You don't wait until you have a perfect relationship to commit to a person. You commit to the person in order to create the perfect relationship. 14, passion is not the cause of good work, but the effect. You don't wait until you find something you love doing. You learn to do something well in the process of developing competency and agency, then causes you to become passionate about it. Ah, <sighs> where's my paint thinner? Number 15, the person you marry is the person you fight with. The house you buy is the house you repair. The dream job you take is the job you stress over. Everything comes with an inherent sacrifice to it. Whatever makes us feel good will inevitably also make us feel bad. Number 16, a happy life is not a life without stress. It's a life of meaningful stress. Number 17, don't view exercise as an exchange for something. You don't work out to lose a few pounds or earn that hamburger and ice cream. With this mindset, you will lose motivation quickly and quit. Instead, view exercise as an investment. For every unit of energy you put in, you will receive multiple units of energy back. The catch is that these units of energy you get back will be spread out over weeks, months, and years. This is why exercising hardcore occasionally is far inferior than exercising a little bit every day. 
Okay, so here's a bonus thing that I kind of knew at 20, but I definitely know at 40, and that is meditation makes everything else in life easier. Which leads me to the sponsor of this video, Headspace, the meditation app. Meditation is one of the most scientifically validated mental practices you can do. It's been shown to reduce stress, improve sleep, increase memory and focus, and improve general feelings of well-being. And best of all, you can do it literally anywhere. You can do it at home, on a bus, at work, even while you're taking a shit. Headspace is great because it has thousands of hours of guided meditations to help you develop a practice for yourself. I've been meditating since I was 18 and it's been one of the most useful practices that I've found to help me improve my life. And fun fact, I was a customer of Headspace back in 2015. So I guess you could say I knew them before they were cool. Check out the link in the description to get the first 60 days for free. That's a lot of days, by the way. Like if you meditated 10 minutes a day for 60 days, that's 10 hours of free guided meditations. That's a lot of fucking meditation. So check it out. Back to the life lessons. Number 18, trust people. Most of them are good. And while you might get hurt or embarrassed sometimes, the alternative is just way worse. Number 19, there's no such thing as a life without problems. Warren Buffett has money problems. A homeless guy has money problems. Buffett's money problems are way more desirable than the homeless guys. Problems don't just disappear. They get exchanged and upgraded for better problems as you grow and evolve. The solution to today's problem will be the seed of tomorrow's. Number 20, Growth is rarely accompanied by joy and celebration. On the contrary, growth is usually painful to some degree. That's because growth requires loss. A loss of your old values, your old behaviors, your old loves, your old identity. Change always has a component of grief to it, so be sure to let yourself grieve. Number 21, statistically speaking, a normal person is physically unhealthy, emotionally anxious and depressed, socially lonely and financially in debt. Fuck being normal. Number 22, if you can't say no, then your yeses mean nothing. We are defined by what we give up, what we sacrifice, and what we reject. If you sacrifice nothing and reject nothing, then you have no identity. You are merely a reflection of the preferences and demands of the people around you. In other words, if you don't decide who you are, other people will decide for you. Number 23, be careful how you define yourself. Your identity is a self-constructed mental prison confining you to a life of desperately seeking and finding things to validate whatever you've chosen to become. Define yourself as loosely and ambiguously as possible. You will feel less defensive towards the world and be willing to change when it's necessary. Number 24, don't make assumptions about people. You have no fucking idea what they've been through. Don't make assumptions about yourself either. The last person we're objective about is ourselves. Number 25, no one thinks about you as much as you think about yourself. Whatever you are insecure about, chances are 99% of people around you haven't even noticed it. This is because everybody else is too busy thinking about themselves. This may strike you as a little bit depressing, but it's actually liberating. It means that you are judged far less than you think. Number 26, confidence does not come from an expectation of success. It comes from a comfort with failure. There's a word for someone who feels a need to succeed at everything, a fucking narcissist. Number 27, develop a willingness to be disliked. It will grant you the freedom to do what needs to be done even if it's unpopular. Number 28, you cannot be a life-changing presence to some people without also being a complete fucking joke to others. Part of the price of having impact is some hate, and usually that hate is proportional to the impact. Number 29, floss and wear sunscreen every day. Look, I know I sound like your mom right now, but trust me, in 20 years, you're gonna be thanking me. Number 30, extraordinary results come from repeating ordinary actions over an unordinary amount of time. Any overnight success is secretly the result of quietly working in obscurity for years, if not decades. Number 31, choosing a partner is not about romance. You're also choosing a confidant, a counselor, career advisor, therapist, investor, teacher, travel buddy, roommate, best friend, business partner. And no, I'm not saying you should make your partner be all these things. I'm saying whether you want to or not, your partner is gonna to become all of these things. That's what a relationship is. So choose fucking wisely. Number 32, don't overestimate romantic love. Love doesn't fix relationship problems. It doesn't make trust issues go away. The truth is love can harm as much as it heals. It's an amplifier. It makes a good relationship better and a bad relationship much worse. Don't get me wrong, love is great. I mean, love is beautiful when it works right. But for a healthy relationship by itself, love is not enough. Number 33, trust is the currency of all relationships. Every good relationship is built off back. I think I have something in my teeth. Flaws. 
Every good relationship is built off the back of years of trust. Every failed relationship fails because of broken trust. Therefore, honesty and integrity are the backbones of a life of healthy relationships and therefore happiness. Dishonesty and a lack of integrity might be a shortcut to some short-term gains, but you're completely fucking yourself in the long run. So fucking stop it. Number 34. Speaking of which, if all of your relationships have the same problem, then newsflash, you're the fucking problem. Number 35. There's no such thing as a bad emotion, only a bad response to an emotion. Every emotion can be used constructively or destructively. One of the most useful things you can ever learn in your life is to figure out how to channel your negative emotions constructively. Number 36. My whole life, I always promised myself I would never be that guy who went to bed at 9 p.m. on a Friday, and I would never be that guy who got up at 5 a.m. to hit the fucking gym and get after it. But kids, I hate to tell you, mornings are the real shit. Number 37, you don't have to prove anything to anyone, including yourself. Let me say that again for the people in the back. You don't have to prove anything to anyone, including yourself. Number 38, life advice is like clothing. Try it on and if it doesn't fit, discard it, try something else. And like clothing, bad advice will be useless within a few weeks, but good advice, it will last you a lifetime. Number 39, nothing meaningful in life is easy and nothing easy in life is meaningful. We think we'd like to have everything handed to us on a silver platter, but the truth is that we don't appreciate or enjoy things that we don't struggle for. So stop avoiding the difficult things in your life and instead find the difficult things you enjoy. And finally, number 40, it's never too late to change. A friend of mine once told me a story about his grandmother. He said that when her husband died, she was 62, and for the first time in her life, she began to take piano lessons. For weeks, she practiced all day, every day. At first, the family thought it was just a phase, a way for her to process her grief. But months went by, and she continued to play every day. People started to wonder if she was crazy or something was wrong with her. They told her to give it up, face reality. I mean, she was old. By the time she was in her 90s, she had been playing piano every day for over 30 years longer than most professional musicians have been alive. She had mastered all of the classics, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Vivaldi. Everyone who heard her play swore that she must have been a concert pianist in her youth. No one believed her when she said that she took her first lesson in her 60s. I love this story because it shows that even at an impractical old age in life, you still have more time left to learn something than most professionals at that thing have even been alive. I didn't start writing until I was 27. I didn't start this YouTube channel until I was 36. In every phase of my life, I've started five to 10 years later than most people. Yet, it didn't matter. It's never too late. I get emails all the time from people asking me, hey, I'm 20 or 40 or 60 or 80. Is it too late? Can I change? Is there time? The answer is, it's never too late. There's always time. The only question is how long we're gonna sit here and make excuses and pretend there's not. All right, guys, that was fun. I'll see you when I'm 50.